Don't take a sound bite out of this. A cat peed in my mouth. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Austria. Austria. Uh, yeah. German, the second German speaking country. There's only two. I, well, uh, Luxembourg? they speak, they speak German in Africa. Do, do they? Yeah. I thought I speak, I spoke French. In Africa? Well, I'm obviously there's a lot of African languages. Right, there's a lot of African languages. But I'm languages. saying the European languages that trickled over. There's some country in Africa that speaks German. Oh wow, interesting. Um, this here is Frank, uh, luck of the Irish, and as you know, Phillies are playoff birthed. Yes, they've been birthed yes. into the playoffs. So he's he's been a big sports fan recently. Yep, Phillies. He's gotten mm-hmm. real into it. Um, you know, he always says this thing. He's one of these people that like move on hobby to hobby. They but but real- he's he's loyal to Philadelphia, oh, yeah. which brings to mind this is a green Phillies. Phillies are red. Yeah, and um, I bleed red. You know that funny statement, <laughs> and uh, a, f- a little shamrock. Do and we have that with a lot of stuff in Philadelphia. Yeah, is it because Philadelphia has a lot of, Phil- of Irish immigrants, or would you see? Could you see Irish like you know um, the the uh, what is the California um, baseball team? Um, the, the Dodgers, yeah, the Dodgers. Would you see that? I think it is a Philadelphia. I'm sure you could find anything anywhere. Okay, but you see, especially in Philadelphia, I'm sure you would see it more in Boston. Right. You know, I mean, just the Celtics alone are a basketball team that is based around you know being yeah. being called a name that's from the Celtic and the uh, mascot and everything, but. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely think it is depend on where you are, and yeah. I don't know other. Cities. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, and you're not in the town and stuff. Like this is uh, like I said, it's 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 the font of the yeah. Phillies and everything. But then you have this. Like, would you see that? Uh, you know, for a team out of a different city, we're not in that city. So no, I, no, yeah, I think I think it's definitely a, a local thing. I think. A lot um, of Irish immigrants. A lot of Irish, um, yeah. It's a big Irish. New York, Boston, uh, big, New York, Boston, Philadelphia. Irish, yeah, and also uh, close, like, uh, how do I put this? The history, it's a close-knit Irish heritage. Like, I'm sure, it, like, per capita, you could find other cities. Like, oh, well, you know, Chicago has more Irish immigrants than, than Philadelphia. But mm-hmm. it's like, I think Philadelphia and Boston had a strong original. Yeah. Like, like, Chi- like you know, Chinatown is like one little small town, but like entire just neighborhoods yeah, that were yeah. of irish people that held on to that culture yeah absolutely um so shout out ireland i guess today well i'm austria so i'll shout out austria hey you can shout out whatever you want it's that kind of day it's friday it's wild it's wacky friday yeah. um it is a great day to be alive we've made it through another week mm-hmm. um lucky seven what's happening did you go to the dentist it's national smile day oh Okay. Show off them pearly whites. Well, he never does. Uh, yeah, well, he's stone faced. He's rubber faced. <laughs> he's soft. Rubber face. It sounds like uh, a superhero or like a super villain. Is there Ru- something? Uh, w- w- it sounds familiar. In Fantastic Four, there's that stretchy guy. No, that he's a good guy. This is a bad guy. I, it's like I feel like he's a comic book somebody. What is the uh, Flex Armstrong? I love Flex Armstrong. Yeah, that's a rubber stretch. M- yeah, stretch Armstrong. I had stretch. Remember, I was a weird kid. I don't remember, but I've been told. <laughs> I told you, and you've seen the documentaries. I was a very weird kid, and um, Just like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> I was not. Um, but let me tell you something about Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, first of all, I was a weird kid, and I I wasn't really. I have a great imagination as an adult, but back when I was little, it was hard for me really to do the imagination stuff with like Barbies or dolls, and so the fake baby dolls were always too light. For me, oh. a stretch Armstrong. He was full of I don't know what he was full of. He was full of some gel. Yeah, he was very very heavy. So he had some weight to him. He was my baby. Yeah, stretch arms. One of one of I used to pick heavy things to where I'd put books in a blanket. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. I I know a little bit how he felt about eating people. Can we say that on here? We just did. <laughs> so I guess we're gonna keep. Okay, so I am not a vegan. Um, you I would say I'm pescatarian. Um, but I really don't eat that much fish. 
So I'm a vegetarian. Who where, where are you getting? Are you getting to like? I won't drink a beer because I know I'm become a full blown alcoholic. No. Do you not have chicken no. because no. it's a gateway to flesh? No, 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 no. I, I, but I, I follow. I, I don't follow, but like I'll take notice of vegetarian recipes or yeah. ideas. So I saw this thing, and it was like on the on the social media platforms, taking watermelon and roasting Oof. it like a roast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, no, because I've, I've smelled the story. You smelled it in this house? No, I'm just. Uh, but uh, a different time. Yeah. No, you you told me. Oh, about, okay, about okay, the, okay. The smell. I didn't know who I told. So, so you you peel it with a with a potato peeler, um, to make it look like a big lump of raw meat. This, okay. is, this is how you do it, yeah. and then you score it. In the, you know how you can like how you would score a ham. Yes, like a ham. Okay. And then they were taking like you know this kind of um, what is it called? Like they in in um like Mexican Cal Calmex um sort of environments. They they push the glass into and they come up with it like um like a it's like a I don't want it's not adobe it's like a a seasony. Do you know what I'm talking about? They do it to beers like beer cans. You you dip it into this seasony roundabout so when you're drinking your modello or whatever okay it's like what you would do with margarita with salt but yeah but this is red and okay. it's um i forget what it's called all of a sudden but it's um it's not cajun it's, i think it might be more mexican anyway it's like this dry rub yeah but people put it on alcoholic drinks whatever you'll can see that later um but the, you put it on the on the watermelon that you've scored you put yeah. it in a roasting pan, you put it in the oven, and you roast the watermelon, um, and then they take it out. I don't know how long you cook it or what the heck you do. And it, when you slice it, you know, it's like red, juicy steaks. Um, of course, of course, I never expected it to taste like meat. Yeah. And that's fine. I also don't do things how I'm supposed to do ever. So what did you do wrong? Well, I didn't peel it. So you put an entire green... Well, I, no, I chop, like I cut it as if I was going to share it at a barbecue. Uh -huh. That's the other thing. I have seen people put it on barbecues, not in real life, but I've seen on TV. You okay. char it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, who cares? I cut it. It still had the rind. It had pieces. And I said, I'll try two things. One, I stuck in the oven. And one, I put in a pan on top of the stove. And on, and both of them, I put the heat pretty high because I thought, oh, let's get that kind of charred business going on. Okay, everybody. This is what you don't see on TikTok or on Instagram Reels. And I don't know why. And I Googled it afterwards and I couldn't find it. It smells like burning flesh. <laughs> and it tastes. Do you know what it tastes? Did I tell you what it tasted like? Like flesh? It tasted. Okay. This has never happened to me. Once again, don't take a sound bite out of this. A cat peed in my mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cat peed has never peed in my mouth. But. Like, you can't even say pee. That's too... It's like cat piss. Oh, God. And it was so... It went so far into my tissues and stuff that no matter what I was doing, it was with How me. How big of a bite you take? Just a little... Just a little wiggly old... It literally looks like a little tongue of a little <laughs> demon. It, it, it was like a very dark red, very hot, very wiggly... <laughs> Like you cut that thing in the back of your throat. Oh, <laughs> the, well, the And then I. And it was so horrendous. Now, how do I know what burning flesh smells like? Um, when I was younger, do, is there still um car you you push in the lighter and yeah yeah they uh, still have them no okay well the, you know them though yeah you push it in and then you have the round glowing rings of yeah. light. When I was little, I said, touch it. Stuck my finger in. You got to smell. I got to smell what cooked flesh smells like it was horrific okay um never did eat um either of the cat or the person okay but it was just it was horror okay <laughs> someone else in the house was screaming and begging to, for me to um take everything don't just throw it away. like you need to take it to a dumpster far away like the oven <laughs> you take the oven away yeah. we open the windows we put on the fans Blah, 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 blah. It was horrendous. Don't ever cook watermelon. I Googled it. I Googled toxins, rind, uh, I everything. I couldn't find anything. Now, I asked my my neighborhood fishmonger. He knows a lot about rotting fish smells and stuff. He said, well, 
was the was the was the watermelon ready to turn on you know you know when it goes too far yeah and you expedited the process he he was thinking that because watermelon can smell rotten watermelon smells very bad yeah because yeah even if like, i imagine the bad taste it would be like you burnt sugar and it's no. that kind of bitter taste but no not not the um when i took the first bite okay so let me walk you through my first bite when i took the first bite first there was nothing like she was standing you know my friend she's like what's it taste like and i'm like it tastes like nothing as soon as i said that i got i did get a green taste okay but that immediately was replaced with this other thing and i'm telling you it went into my gums my cheeks and my body so that hours and hours later i was like and i i i like ate doritos like i was trying to get my well you did it so no one else has to not i don't want anyone to ever this is a psa not that no one else ever would have i think it's getting like trendy. People are like sticking it on the bar. Well, it's winter now. Maybe they won't, but don't. Don't. There's a reason why it's not a thing. Hey, watermelon's great the way it is. You know, that's the definition of it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Um, but it did turn me off to cold watermelon too now. Like, I don't oh, know. Really? I don't know when I'll be able to eat watermelon again because it was wow. so bad. Well, that's unfortunate. I, that's more of the PSA. Yeah, but it's also not the season, so. It's always the season. Okay. Um, National You Matter to Me Day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no, it's National Verona Matters to Spencer Day. <laughs> yeah. um, but, guys, it's actually, it, there's, only, there's only one day that matters on our Fridays um, when they do come around. And um, that's what we do every week. Check out the playlist. It's Dr. Seuss, Seuss Friday. Friday. Friday of Dr. Seuss. It is Dr. Seuss Friday, um, a day that is near and dear to our hearts. We've been doing it for months now. Look at the playlist. Look at the, don't ask us. Add, add it up. I mean, <laughs> you, you look at it. Yeah. Every, every every episode is a week and it's been weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks yes. and weeks and weeks. So on Dr. Seuss Friday, we read a Dr. Seuss book. And before you go to some uh, more adult programming, not too adult, I hope, <laughs> but and say, well, I'm not listening to a Dr. Seuss book. I want you to just stop. Right. What you Stop your thought process. Stop thinking. Hands up. Yeah. Hand, hands up. Um. Why we do it is because that we are looking at it from a big brain perspective. Mm-hmm. We're getting a Dr. Shoes book, which is for little brains, and we're looking at it through our big brains and yeah. finding the meaning because all Dr. Shoes books have meaning. I work at a school. I do. You know I do. I do. I work with the little, little kids, kids that are prime for Dr. Seuss. In doing so, I've been opened up to books that aren't Dr. Seuss. And like night and day, you see a difference. Yeah. And it's it's sure he had a way of rhyming, and he had he had a way of of his character development with Horton and stuff. But it's it's the almost the uh, the adult nature of the concepts being through it. it. It's what keeps you captivated. It's what keeps you reading it to kids through generations. So today we go through Doctor Seuss books, and then we get meaning. And spiritual meaning as well, because um, this is also a parallel to Bible studying and reading a parable and saying, "What does it mean?" This is this is a mental a mental strengthening test of reading a Dr. Seuss book, which has meaning in it, just like the Bible. Well, not you know, yeah, <laughs> equivalent to the Bible. Similar. No, um, and so it's it's good on all all accounts. And hey, different levels. Yeah. You might just want to listen to a Dr. Seuss book being read. Yeah. You might want to get some real meaning and work that big brain of yours. Whatever you're here for, stick around because it's going to be fun. And today we have a very special book for you um, because a lot of people don't even know what it is, including myself. If it's even a book. Oh, uh, foreshadowing. Interesting, interesting. This is Dr. Seuss. Hooray for Diffin Doofer Day. Okay. Sounds Dr. Seussy. Right for different. We love holidays. And I guess today is different do for day. Now, can you give us a little explanation of why this book is so special? This book is so special because Dr. Seuss's longtime editor um, who worked for, with Dr. Seuss for more than a decade. I'm sure I can't remember. Uh, after Dr. Seuss passed away, he 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 still had access to and um, allowance of Dr. Seuss's paperwork. And Dr. Seuss's um, uncompleted manuscripts and his sketches and his uh, storyboards and notes and everything. And um, 
the this book, the, the makings of this book, the idea for this book and the and the and the journey of this book was in the works for years because that's how Dr. Seuss worked. He didn't sit down and write a book. Yeah. He, you know, he, he was had always things going. Yeah. yeah. And planning and, and you know what I wanted to, what what do I want to do with that? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyway, and unfortunately now Dr. Seuss had passed on. Um and he had heard that the editor was aware of this book as well yeah. because you know you would tell your editor I have this and no, I'll, I'll do this instead. He was hoping the editor was hoping when he did get to go through the paperwork that it would be done, done, done yeah. like the other books that Dr. Seuss had presented. He found out that it was not done, done, done. It was quite in deconstruction. Yes, you know, like a deconstructed dinner. Um, so the editor said it was so good and it was so important and he and he knows it was important to Dr. Seuss because he talked about it. He said, I am going to to make it I'm going to 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 fill in manifest completely. Yes, to fill in all of the bridge all the gaps right. and make this book reality. Right. Yeah. So I mean it's similar to any artist. You know, uh you have artists who have a bunch of sketches and especially if they become famous they come out or right. even musical artists will have um you know things that they've recorded that are put up post mortem because it's like right. this is a great song that he was planning on putting out. Right. And um so yeah, so special one today, Dr. Seuss Hooray. But he, he didn't for the editor didn't Diffin um, do for a day. The editor didn't finish it. The editor um you remember. Yeah. He, he got these guys very yeah, um, very famous um very they knew Dr. Seuss as well and very capable yes. uh writer and illustrator. He the, the editor was the orchestra leader. Yes. And then he got this um, these two other people. Um, we got Jack Prolutsky and Lane Smith. So so they worked. Dr. Seuss together. Ray for a different door day with some help from Jack Prolutsky and, and Jane Smith. And they all channeled Dr. Seuss yes. to, to, to honor him. And how great. Can you imagine after you pass on, what you've done was such a um, a standard. People knew what, you know, how you would speak or how you yeah. would want it to happen. And they carried on the work for you. Yeah, maybe when uh, when you and I pass away, the uh, someone will put up the Roots podcast. Roots. Yeah, What's remember, that? remember we had a podcast that was Roots, and I didn't like it. Oh gosh, so I never the uploaded un- it. Yeah. No, they would just make a Croak and Crow podcast in the way that that we would have done it. That's yes. what I'm saying. To to have such a brand. Yeah. Another another podcast on the on the on the playlist. Yeah. That right. it can be replicated. Let's get into it. I've always lived in Dinkerville. My friends all live here too. We go to Diff and Doofer School. We're happy that we do. Our school is at the corner of Dink Zuber and Dink Zot. It looks like any other school, but we suspect it's not. I think we're learning lots of things not taught at other schools. Our teachers are remarkable. They make up their own rules. Miss Bobble teaches listening. Miss Wobble teaches smelling. Miss Fribble teaches laughing. And Miss Quibble teaches yelling. Miss Twinning teaches tying knots. In, nank- in neckerchiefs and noodles, and how to tell chrysanthemus from miniature poodles. Miss Vinning teaches all the ways a pigeon may be pe- pe- peppered, and how to put up a saddle on a lizard or a leopard. My teacher is Miss Bonkers. She's as bouncy as a flea. I'm not certain what she teaches, but I'm glad she teaches me. Look, look, she chirps. I'll show you how to tell a cactus from a cow. And then I'll sh- and then I shall instruct you why a hippo cannot hope to fly. She even teaches frogs to dance and pigs to put on underpants. One day she taught a duck to sing. Miss Bonkers teaches everything. Of all the teachers in our school, I like Miss Bonkers best. Our teachers are all different, but she's differenter than the rest. We also have a principal. His name is Mr. Lowe. He is the very saddest man that any of us know. He mumbles, are they learning, this and that and such and such. His face is wrinkled as a prune from worrying so much. He breaks a lot of pencil points from pushing down too hard. And many dogs start barking as he mopes around the yard. We think he wears false eyebrows. In fact, we're sure it's so. We've heard he takes them off at night. I guess we'll never know. But we know he likes Miss Bonkers. He treats her like a queen. He's always there to watch her when she's on her trampoline. There are many other people who make Diff and Doofer run. They are utterly amazing. I love every single one. Our nurse, Miss Clot, knows what to do when we've got sniffles or the flu. One day I had a splint or so. She bandaged me from head to toe. Mr. Plunger, our custodian, has fashioned a machine. A super-zooper-flooper-do. It keeps the whole school clean. 
Our music teacher, Mrs. Fox, makes bagpipes out of straws and socks. Our art instructor, Mr. Breeze, paints pictures hanging by his knees. In science class with Mr. Katz, we learn to build robotic rats. In gym, we watch as Mr. Bear hoists elephants into the air. Miss Loon is our librarian. She hides behind the shelves and often cries out louder when we're reading to ourselves. We have three cooks all named McMunch who merrily prepare our lunch. They make us hot dogs, beans, and fries, plus things we do not recognize. And as they cook, they sing their song, not too short and not too long. Roast and toast and slice and dice, cooking lunch is oh so nice. We were eating their concoctions, telling jokes and making noise. When Mr. Lowe appeared and howled, attention girls and boys. He began to fuss and fidget, scratch and mutter, sneeze and cough. He shook his head so hard we thought his eyebrows would come off. He wrung his hands, he cleared his throat, he shed a single tear. Then sobbed, I've something to announce, and that is why I'm here. All schools for miles and miles around must take a special test. To he see who's learning such and such, to see which school is best. If our school does not do well, then it will be torn down, and you will have to go to school in dreary Flobbertown. Not Flobbertown, we shouted, and we shuddered at the name, for everyone in Flobbertown does everything the same. It's miserable in Flobbertown, they dress in just one style. They sing one song, they never dance, they march in single file. They do not have a playground, and they do not have a park. Their lunches have no taste at all, their dogs are scared to bark. Miss Bonkers Rose, don't fret, she said, you've learned the things you need. To pass that test and many more, I'm certain you'll succeed. We've taught you that the earth is round, that red and white makes pink. And something else that matters more, we taught you how to think. I hope you're right, sighed Mr. Lowe, he shed another tear. The test is in ten minutes, and you're taking it right here <clears throat> we sat in shock and disbelief oh no we mooned oh no we were even more unhappy than unhappy with mr low but then the test was handed out yahoo we yelled yahoo for it was filled with all the things that we all knew we knew there were questions about noodles about poodles frogs and yelling about listening and laughing about chrysanthemus and smelling there were questions about other things we'd never seen or heard and yet we somehow answered them enjoying every word one week later after recess mr low meandered in we'd never seen him smile before but now he wore a grin he soon began to giggle then his giggle grew by half and then it really happened mr low began to laugh you saved our school you've saved our school he jubilantly roared we've got the very highest score he wrote it on the board miss bonkers did some cartwheels till her face turned cherry red she bounded up to Mr. Low and kissed him on the head. Hooray, hooray, she shouted. I'm so proud I cannot speak. So she did another cartwheel, and she pecked him on the cheek. Ahem, ahem, coughed Mr. Low. You all deserve a bow. I thus declare a holiday. It starts exactly now. Because you've done so splendidly in every sort of way, this day forever shall be known as Diffendorer Day. And furthermore, I promise I won't ever wear a frown, for now I know we'll never go to dreary Flobber Town. Then we held a celebration, there was pizza, milk, and cake. Like everyone, I ate too much and got a belly ache. We laughed and whooped and hollered the entire school day long. Then we all sang triumphantly the Diff and Doofer song. We love you, Diff and Doofer school, we definitely do. There's surely no other school that's anything like you. You're gribulous and you're grobulous. Each day we love you more. You are the school we treasure and unceasingly adore. Oh, finest school in Dinkerville, the only one as well. We love you, Diff and Doofer School, much more than we can tell. You are so Diff and Dooferous, it gives us joy to say, three cheers for Diff and Doofer School. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Hooray. What a good book. Um, well, as you were looking at it, as you were reading it, I was looking at the pictures and I was also reminded about what I had read about it. And they have his original... Um, uh, sketches sketches for, within within so, yeah the, um, the redone sketches whoever was it smith was the illustrator he it's he or she might be a she sorry but whoever you are they they um they did beautiful um drawings yeah but you can see that the pieces that the editor had found are in there plus if you see on the library the librarian page it had all Dr. Seuss books yeah. when, when um, she was referring to that. Um, and so that is, all the books are fun to look at the illustrations, but that one w will be great to look at the illustrations um, 
to what do you think? Did you think they did him service? Do you think uh, do you think they honored him with that book, or do yeah, you think they no. were? I, I think they honored. Did him. they miss the mark? I think they honored him. I can tell why they they wanted it. I, I think talk about meaning. I think it has a lot of meaning, and I want to use the last five minutes. To oh talk yeah, about just it. one second. I remembered one more thing that I read, which was the standardized testing. I don't think. I mean, it, the, all, the all the thoughts were his, but that what the they did really want to do what is currently standardized testing. I don't know if they had standardized testing uh, back then, but, but you know, we obviously have testing that will make your school close. Yeah. So they pushed onto that, but okay. so go ahead. Yeah. Um, one, uh, we, it was, it's world teachers day <gasps> oh, this week. Right. We, we, had a, we, week. we had an entire podcast about teachers and, and that's what this was all about. And I loved it from that point of view because in the beginning, you're talking about this crazy school. That's like, Everything's fun. All the teachers are interesting. Right. We learn. We learn to laugh and play. Like, all of these cool concepts and kind of go into what's a good teacher. And what made the whole thing so beautiful is when the test came. It's like, oh no, a test. And the teacher comforted them. And it's like, you didn't realize we were learning that the entire time, but it wasn't in that flubber town way, <laughs> which is what makes a great teacher. I, I think. I think you could give this as a present to teachers. Thank, is this you got this for me? <laughs> for, it was all planned. No, really, Holy Spirit, activate yeah. because this book was bought last week. Yeah, we didn't do it last week. We did it this week again, not knowing it'd be World Teachers Day on Wednesday. Yeah, amazing. And my final saying point, you can talk after if you'd like, is what is so nice about this is about you know I, I take stuff about teachers and stuff, but is this not Dr. Seuss? Yeah. Is Diffendor School not <gasps> what Dr. Seuss is doing and what we're doing? Oh, reading I have it. chills. It's his last book was the book about him. Yeah. It, 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 and Which he was too too modest to have written. Yeah. And, and, completely. And, and so all of his stories and why we are reading them fifty years later is because it's like would would literally every intro we say the same thing. Behind the fun rhymes and the right. goofy characters are these real deep meanings. And and so like with the books we read it's like okay that was a really fun story and it's like yeah it actually talks about you know be, yeah. uh being divert like not not being ignorant um you know being being selfless and so when the when the test comes for the, for the kids who grew up on dr seuss right. to be in a, in a situation where you can life you, the test of can, life yeah oh i don't know what to do uh, all i learned as a kid is about Horton and Borin, and it's like, the but no, you learned about caring about the planet. Individuality, and it's like, yeah. You look at the test of life, and you're like, wait, I, for some reason, it's like they said they never even saw the answers. So, mm. what what is it? The Lorax is it, it can be easily compared to like global warming and stuff. Right. If you see global warming on a a, a thing to make an opinion on it, right. It's I've never seen this word. Right, right. But it's like, for some reason, I know that you know it's important to protect the environment, and it all comes from what you learn the correct way through positive inspiration and, and captivating teachers that are just like in Diffendor school. I love it. I love it too. I think it's a great book. I was worried. I was worried because being such a Dr. Seuss fan, reading that pile of books over there. This might be my favorite Dr. Seuss book. Really? You yeah. know, and then it's like someone else is going to have any sort of hand in it is yeah. like, you know, hey. I don't know no, if, I, you, I if think you should dare touch. You know, Like I said, I think it's a beautiful homage. And I really do think it is a beautiful cherry on the top to Dr. Seuss. Because like you said, like this, forget about Diffendor School. This can be so compared to Dr. Seuss. And how even more fitting, more likable that Dr. Seuss isn't the one that you're right. like, oh, I can compare this. Like, oh, what, he put a book out that you could be compared to being right, about him. It's right. like he had the people that he did inspire right. put back out the book of what makes you think about right. him inspiring. Right. It's great all around. Get it, around the post. it really is. In closing, I want to say congratulations to the guy. I'm sorry. I don't know his name, but he rode his boat from New York to Ireland. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I think um, this week. So I think, I think today it said two days ago. And that's why Frank was wearing his Irish That's why stuff. he's wearing it for this guy. And you'll get his name at the end. Yeah, absolutely. And just because I don't know his name doesn't mean, it wasn't crazy awesome. <laughs> it's crazy awesome. <laughs> That's it for our podcast. Thank you so much for coming. Happy Diffendor Day. Um, that, diff, sorry, Diffendoofer Day. 
Uh, we'll be back next week. Peace. Peace.